Hi everyone, I'm Brittany and this is my Design Trends Report for 2019. My name's Brittany Bowering and this is Digital Design Trends for 2019. How was that? Was that a pretty good reporter? Not bad. I'm going to take you through what I've found in all of my research. I was, you know, just up all night long, uh, you know, just studying, reading everything so that you don't have to. Isn't that great? I talked also to all of our head designers here at AJ and Smart, got their opinions on what they think is going to be important basically in the coming year. So jumping into 2019 after watching this video, well, you'll have all the information you need, right? Right. So let's just get started. Basically, I'm going to take you through, I've got all these tabs open of the things that I've found that I think are really important. And of course, it's not just this one person who I'll show you has mentioned the trend. It's probably come from various different points, but I'll show you kind of what I think are the, the big ones that just kind of kept popping up. So the first one that is also, I think, for me, most interesting is the minimalism trend. So this kind of actually crosses into a lot of different categories, but the basic idea, actually I'll show you here on my page, I have uh, this kind of blog, it's just all about minimalism in design, and they talk about minimalism actually is, which I think is important to define when you're actually telling someone it's the trend. So the uh, Webster Dictionary defines it as a style or technique that is characterized by extreme sparseness or simplicity. So I think this is really interesting because a lot of times, I mean, in the past years, what has been like the most common kind of issue in product design or, or something that we've been trying to solve is engagement. We want to engage people. We want them to spend a long time on our apps. We want them to, you know, their screen time to, to increase. And now we're really making a pretty conscious shift into basically the opposite. So people are talking a lot about, you know, making sure that you're not actually engaging the user when you don't need to be. You know, making sure that when you're um, asking them for things or when they're moving through your product, you're not just like throwing unnecessary notifications at them or pop-ups and all these kind of annoying things. People are even more like anxious and busy and overwhelmed as it is in this modern world. So I think it's important that we as product designers and in this industry are just kind of being mindful of that. So another thing from this Anas Nasir, he talks about like time-saving design features. Like people are really, really busy. So you want to actually make sure that the time that they spend using your product or your service is for good reason or, you know, you're actually providing value for them. So, you know, talking about designing with common user, user navigation patterns, um, context specific features, that's interesting. Gentle nudges, he calls them, which I think is uh, kind of interesting. I hate that he says the word pop-up though, because I think the world would be a better place with less pop-ups. But it's kind of interesting, you know, he's just sort of talking about how we need to kind of keep the user in mind a little bit more uh, going forward and what are the common issues that they're facing in their lives, which are very often like anxiety and overwhelm. Um, he also down here talks about like getting rid of common annoyances. Um, this is an interesting article. He talks, um, you yeah, know, I mean, people are using an average of 30 apps per month and about 10 a day, which is a lot actually. Interesting that he talks about uh, 2019 could be the beginning of the end of passwords. Um, so actually just using like verification codes and not having to think of all of these passwords constantly um, is gonna be kind of helpful. Um, so talking about here, page load times, storage space, uh, transitioning from one device to another, that's interesting, um, making sure that you know, you're, it's, it's a cohesive experience for the user. So I think that, um, I mean, I did talk about minimalism before, which which I kind of <laughs> uh, got out of that, got out of that uh, talk there. But the point um, that I think is really important is that, you know, we, and I mean, Apple's talking a lot about it. I think Google as well, just about actually like reducing screen time. I'm getting pop-up messages on my phone all the time telling me how much screen time, whether it was more or less than more or less than last week. Um, and I think that is important to be conscious of moving forward into, into 2019. So first one, minimalism. Um, the second one is the internet of things. So um, more specifically in that realm is voice. 
I mean, I know that that's also like a common thing um, that everybody's talking about, but you know, there's a huge rise in smart home devices, like things like Nest, uh, things like Google Assistant, obviously like Siri as well. Um, this photo is just, I can't look at this photo without thinking that it's like just a little bit, there's just something weird about it. I don't know, it's not a good photo. Let's just say that. So this person, Cada Cadabra Studios, I would, I would have put another photo in there if I were you. Um, but super interesting, I mean, by 2030, 30% of searches will be done without a keyboard or screen. I think that's something really to be conscious of. So how can your product or service actually interact with these voice assistants? And how can you make that a streamlined process and actually delight your user with that? It's gonna be really, really interesting. Um, yeah, so blah, blah, blah. let's talk about e-commerce here. Yeah, so combining voice technology and preset commands. So customers can simply ask for what they want and get it. I mean, a good, great example of this is how Google Assistant has actually integrated with Uber. Basically, what they're doing is you can actually say to your Google Assistant, order me an Uber to go to work and Google Assistant knows where you work, they know where you live, and they can just order it instantly without you having to put in all that extra information. It's a really good example of integrated voice uh, interfaces. So that is definitely gonna be a big one. The third one, which is cool for me because I work a lot in this sort of category, is um, the third kind of trend that a lot of people are talking about is content-focused experiences. Um, so this is coming from like a prediction upcoming UX trends from Academy XI. Yeah, it's super interesting. They're talking about how you need to make sure that the content that you're actually showing the user and the way that you're guiding them through it is like a delightful experience and isn't, uh, you know, you're not giving them too much, you're not confusing them, you're not overwhelming them. So it's like 2019, one of the biggest trends will be the ability to tell compelling stories around a digital experience. I think that's really, really important to think about. They're talking about like live video and video ads. So that's more like the marketing around your product, but also super important to keep in mind. I mean, we talk about it all the time how UX design and product designers should know more about the business, more about the marketing of their products. It's really important to keep that in mind when you're building them. Yeah, I think that in summary for the content focused experience is the idea is just that it's important that people have a nice, pleasant time interacting with your product or your service. So in, in you know, it means that like words actually matter a lot. The content, whether it's video or animation or just text, it's important that you think a lot about that and that shouldn't be a second step. It shouldn't be, you know, even the content writer, the copywriter should actually be involved in sort of more in the development phase. So I think that's really interesting um, moving forward into 2019. The next one is talking about, it's down here. Um, this one is also um, from Anas Nasir um, and he's talking about making personalized experiences for the user and how, you know, making them a little bit more, more streamlined. So, you know, whether it's in the form of emails based on knowledge of previous website interactions or text messages, um, you know, it's important that your UX is actually personalized to the user, um, it's gonna be pretty big in 2019. He's talking here about chatbots. I find that interesting because I kind of think chatbots are on the outs, but that's just me personally, so don't, you know, don't, uh don't look too much into that. But I think the voice is on its way in and I think chatbots are kind of a thing of the past. I know myself, I, I just hate interacting with a chatbot. I really find it super impersonal, which is interesting because Facebook, of course, they're popping up all the time. Do you wanna see, like if I'm running ads or something on Facebook, it's always like, your ad performed like this. Do you wanna see more information? And I, I guess it's interesting that they can, you know, quickly do that in the form of a conversation. It does cre create a little bit of this personalized feeling, but. I think that just in general, we could use a lot more of that. Let's see here. Yeah, paying, okay, this is cool. So based on trends seen today, this means paying attention to things like transparency and security. Now we live in Germany, which like security data protection is really, really big, but I think it's really cool that it, like this is gonna kind of transcend into the rest of uh, the world. Um, I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, like with what's going on politically uh, right now, people are really into transparency. They're really into, you know, honesty, and they don't want their data used for, you know, weird 
creepy secret stuff. So I think it's important to, to think about that, you know, think about the political space, what's happening, and then like actually seeing how that translates or, or figuring out how that translates into product design and, you know, the things that you're building. Yeah, so that's kind of a, a really cool one, I think, that's that's quite interesting to think about. He also goes into talking about in more uh, detail about that. So definitely we'll have all the links for these articles down below so you can read them all yourself in depth if you so choose. Now, the next one that is is kind of interesting is just more of a, like an industry focused uh, trend and we've talked a little bit about this in the past um, videos uh, and like I think two videos ago I think we talked about this John did um, just about how um, the way that we define UX as an industry and the way that the actual positions are called and what your actual job title and role will be um, is going to change a lot. So what's interesting right now, it's not really an article actually, it's more of a report, but it's a state of the UX in 2019. I think it looks really nice. I really like the way it looks. So we've seen quite a lot this year after curating and sharing 2,239 links with, uh, these are the amount of people I guess who have read them, 260,000 designers. They've isolated these trends basically coming from that. So that's kind of interesting. This is a really cool one. I would, I would suggest reading it. But one thing that I thought was really cool was this like everyone is a lead. So you're all excited. You're like, oh, I'm a design lead. Blah, blah. And then you look around, you're like, oh, everybody is a design lead right now, which is, you know, a little sad, but interesting to, to know in the year, you know, coming up. Yeah. So um, this I think is like pretty much sums it up quite well this this little animation here like you're two months into your career and you're a lead designer right or senior UX and that's actually kind of interesting because John our CEO straight out of university was the like senior UX designer at like a really big German company and I think it's kind of funny it's very telling for where the industry was at back then so we are seeing a bit of a shift but what's interesting is based on based on like a scan of the market, there's like everybody's looking for senior UX designers. It seems like that is sort of the base level for what you need on a product team. And I think that that is gonna maybe shift a little bit, you know, going forward because we've got a lot of entry level UX designers coming in and they won't have the knowledge or experience to be seniors. So I think that's really something kind of interesting. So they kind of sum up 2019, we start looking at seniority through new lenses. So be proud of your lead title, you know, that's cool. But if you consider seniority from the perspective of how much impact you're able to make, then you have a better sense of where you are along in your career trajectory. That's really interesting. So then they kind of go on to talk about actually strategy and making sure that you can be a bigger part of the business other than just, you know, creating, you know, the visual design or the, the even the, you know, the experience design. So that's kind of a cool article. That one I would definitely recommend reading. It's really insightful. Cool. Let's move on to ba -ba 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 -ba. the last thing actually. So that was like five trends that we just talked about. The last thing, which I think is kind of interesting and we were having some pretty heated debates here at AJ and Smart about this, is uh, flat design design versus material design. So there are some designers who are predicting that material design is going to kind of take over flat design. I would be really curious to know what you guys think about that. It's, yeah, it's basically kind of a debate right now in our office. So yeah, I'd like to know what you guys think and then we can kind of tell you what we think. Ooh, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Was that too much? Maybe, maybe it was too much. Sometimes I am too much. Okay, good. So um, yeah, I'll put this link down here as well so you can kind of actually learn what the difference is between the two things. Yeah, maybe we can just go through really quickly. Flat design, so yeah, entirely opposite of side design, absence of details. So flat design, absence of details, simplified and faint colors. Um, so think of super simple, streamlined material design. So this is, so they call it like semi-flat. That's funny, or flat design 2.0. It's a little bit more paper-esque. Yeah, so you can see here, so it's like things look like, almost like a piece of paper, but still in a flat way, so it doesn't have that real look either. Um, and people are thinking that that's actually gonna be taking over a little bit more than flat design coming in 2019. So we'll see, we'll see, it'll be interesting. Good, and the last thing that I wanna talk about before I let you guys go is one of our design leads here at AJ and Smart, Tim Hoffer, wrote an article in 2019, uh, what? in 2016 that I think is just super relevant. He just was talking about like design trend reports and how it's kind of useless to read a bunch of reports and look into these kinds of things because you can never really tell. Like he says here, determining the trends of next year is like reading a, reading tea leaves. It 
it's pretending to speculate about what might matter soon, but it's always based on what the authors already know about the now, which I think is just very insightful. Thank you, Tim. It's very true. I mean, there could be a new technology that just jumps up uh, in the next few months and that will just change everything. So we'll see. But I think that that is really, yeah, just kind of interesting to remember. Like, I've just told you a bunch of things that I found across the internet. It might mean nothing. It might mean something. But I like to be informed. So I think it's important, you know, to just be informed about these things. So that was my first ever trend report coming from AJ and Smart, Brittany reporting from AJ and Smart on the trends for 2019. If you like this kind of video, definitely give it a like. If you would like to subscribe, that would be even better, I have to say. No, not even better. It would be just as good. So thanks so much for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. I'd love to know what you think is trending, what you think in 2019 is going to be really cool and is going to, you know, take the design world by storm. So pop those down in the comments and we can start a little discussion. Yeah, thanks so much for listening. Have a great day. Bye guys. My name is Brittany Bowring and this is my digital trends report. No, uh, my name, this is Brittany Bowring reporting. I, I think I actually at one point in my life as a child did want to be a reporter. That's cool. This is Brittany Bowring and this is the design report.